Everything in this game, from the graphics to the characters, would make you believe that this is a cute, friendly game, but you would be sorely mistaken. In this video, I will cover the most important things you need to know to complete the game of Pine. Our main character is Hugh, and he lives on the unstable cliffs, and he lives in this small village of humans who basically never left the cliffs, and that's the only place where they feel safe. But one day, him and his brother find a cave, and in the cave there are these cave paintings that tell a story about a group of humans who did leave the unstable cliffs. And after they have seen these paintings, there is an earthquake on the cliff, which destroys a bunch of houses and also kills the main character's brother. At that point, Hugh decides that it is too dangerous to stay on the cliff, and it is too dangerous to live there. So he starts his journey to the outside world. Now the outside world is full of these anthropomorphic animals. There are the foxes, the birds, the crocodiles, the lizards, and the reindeer. And there are the tombas, which are these bear things. They give us quests, and they are a race that kinda tries to remain neutral. They are these scientist merchant types who live in the house in the center of the map. The other animals live in villages all over the map. And the game has a social system. And that was the first surprise of the game to me, because based on the graphics and all, uh, I thought that this will be a cute little game where you can go around making friends with all the animals. But it's not. It's a cruel and unforgiving world where everybody hates you and most of them hate each other. And if you think that this will get better over time and you will become friends with them by the end of the game, then uh, minor spoiler, it will only get worse. So the way the system works is that there are three levels, hostile, neutral and friendly. At the hostile level, they are going to attack you no matter where you are, even if you didn't attack them, they are just going to fight you. If you are neutral, they are not going to attack you, and in later in the game you can also teleport to their village. And if you are friendly with them, they are going to trade with you, and you can also call them to raid other villages. You can increase their friendship level by donating items to them at their donation boxes. There are certain items that they want more than others. You can see that in the top right corner of the screen. It is actually one of your first quests to become friends with one of the species, which is a bit of a poorly worded quest. You don't actually need to become friendly level with them. You just need to become neutral with them because you start the game being hostile with everybody, but only slightly hostile. So you don't need that many gifts to become neutral. I found that the best uh, village to complete this quest is the one on the beach near where you start, because there is only going to be that one uh, species there that can fight you, and the other box that is near where you start is at a crossroads, so potentially there are going to be two species there that might attack you. But on the beach there is only the one. The way to do it is that you go down there, and you basically wait until there is nobody around, and then you sneak up to the box and put the items in it, and hope that it's enough to make them neutral and not hate you. If they do attack you, you should run. That's a very effective way to avoid being killed in this game, because every other species in the beginning of the game is stronger than you, however, you are much faster than them if you are sprinting. Also, you should always have some food on you to recharge both your stamina and your health. You can also explore the map, but that is way easier to do if there is at least one species that is neutral to you. They also have social relationship with each other, which are constantly changing, and if you donate to somebody that they hate, then that will decrease your friendship level with them. So it is uh, probably like not even possible to make friends with all of them, and uh, if it is, it's really difficult. The best thing to do is to focus on one or two of them, and just ignore the rest of them. 
It's also not that very useful to make friends with them. There are some useful trades, but I will talk about that later. The second part of the game is the combat. At the beginning you are really weak, so just run away from everything, is my advice. And then later, as you get more armor and better weapons, you will be able to fight them. You actually do get some better armor and a better weapon from one of the first quests, but uh, once you have that there is still no need to fight the villagers. You will have to do it at some point, but not yet. The major plot of the game is discovering the three vaults. The vaults are these ancient magical buildings, these puzzles that you need to solve, and there are three of them and all of them are hiding some magical artifact. And you will need all of the artifacts to open the secret location in the end of the game. To get into the first vault you will need to complete the quest called Word of Mouth which will give you an efficiency plan and you will need to give this efficiency plan to a village to be able to open the vault. Now to make the efficiency plan you need to gather tokens. Tokens are these scrolls that the villagers have and they depend on their job titles. So gatherers have gatherer tokens, traders have trader tokens and guards have guard tokens. And there are two ways to get the tokens, there is no peaceful way to get them. You can either fight the villagers, or you can make a trap and uh, spook them, and that will make them drop all of their items and uh, kind of like be confused for a bit and then walk away. If you are going to use the traps, the way to do that is uh, you need to set up the trap and then you need to go uh, like a little further away, like out of their range, so they don't notice you, and you need to wait a lot and and then eventually, after they walked away, you can go and collect the items that they dropped. After you are a bit stronger, fighting them becomes faster, at least, than trapping them. And the best way to fight them is, first of all, take out lone enemies, at the beginning at least. You can use explosive traps and arrows before you fight them in close combat. You should bring a lot of food in the fight. And if your health gets really low, you should run away for a bit and eat the food and then continue the fight. Now the game has this mechanic that you can use that locks you onto an enemy. You can press the middle button of your mouse to do that. I basically never done it. Reasons I never done it is because it will make it so you can only attack that one enemy. And if you are fighting multiple enemies at the same time, like in a war towards the end of the game, that's really not useful. And even if you are just fighting a single enemy, it will make it harder to run away and it will make it harder to use your ranged ability. So my advice is don't use the lock onto an enemy feature. I think it makes fighting harder. The third part of the game is the gathering, which is basically the majority of the game because there is no leveling in this game. The way you get stronger is by getting better armor and stronger weapons. There are many biomes with different resources, and you can use these in crafting and you can use them in increasing the friendship with the villages. I found a great website that is a map of the game that you can look at and uh, kind of see where every item is. I will link that in the description, it's very useful. And an artifact from one of the vaults also helps a lot with finding items. I will talk about that later. The most important resources that you need to gather are stones for arrows and traps, marrow hay and gravel moss to make stiff cloth for armors and fast travel kits, the alpha font leather that is also for fast travel, wood for basically everything, shiny blue orbs, you will need those for backpack upgrades and for the best armor, and Beagleite. You will need these for the best armor and best weapon in the game. Beagleite of course is very rare. There are only six places where you can find it, and only one of these six places has two of them. All the others have only one. Stone is all over the place. Morohay is in the middle and southwest of the island. Gravel moss can only be found in the middle of the continent. 
The Alpa font leather is mostly on the southwest and some are also on the east. Wood is literally everywhere. There is even some in the desert. You can also find orbs everywhere, but they don't respawn and there is a lim limited number of them. Usually in this game you do not get gear, you get gear recipes and you yourself need to craft the actual gear. And they all require different materials that you can see in the menu. But the game has a really useful feature where you can pin a recipe and then the recipe will appear on your quest uh, log on the side of your screen and that will make it a lot easier for you to see the materials that you still need to collect for the recipe. In the game, both armor and weapons are marked with stars from 1 to 5. You can buy 3 to 4 star equipment from the villages, but you can also find them in the wilderness in secret treasure chests. You can do it in either way, it's basically the same thing, it just looks different. So the basic story arc is that you need to find all the vaults. The order in which you find them doesn't really matter, at least not in terms of the storyline, but where it does matter is that in the end of each vault you get an artifact, and in my opinion some of the artifacts are better than others. So the artifacts are the following. There is the scouting lens that will help you to see the different resources on your map. There is the taming bands that will help you to tame the different critters in the world. And there is the conducting lantern that is used for solving puzzles. And I would recommend collecting them in this order. The scouting lens can be found in the dune observatory. You can find this one in the most south tip of the island in the desert. The second one is in the ancient stables. You can find this in the northeast of the island in the swamp. And the third one is in the hollow mountain. You can find this one in, surprisingly, the mountain in the northeast of the isle. The third one is in the hollow mountain. You can find it, surprisingly, in the mountain in the northwest of the island. Your friendship level with all of the villages will always drop after finishing a vault. And after you finish the last vault, you will not be able to increase your friendship back at all. That, that's why I said in the beginning that there is basically no point in trying to make friends with the villages other than to use them for trading armor and for progressing the story. And even then, you can also find the same armor in other ways by finding the treasure chest. So it's certainly not the kind of game that I expected, but I really enjoyed it to be honest. I like these kinds of gathering games where you explore a story, even if the story was a bit weird and a bit darker than I expected, so I would definitely recommend it. After finishing the last world, you will still be able to ally with one of the species using the help from the tombas, and together you will wage war on all the others fully descending into darkness. See you in the next video.